Hey, this is Arkiv. I'm back with another tutorial to show you how to pick up items and add it to your nice little inventory system that you got. This is part 3, so if you haven't watched the first two parts, I suggest you go and do that. But if you have, let's get started. To start off, let's add a world scene. So, do, do, let's rename this to world. And let's add a child node and we'll create a static body 2D. And this can be our ground. And now let's add another node, a texture rect, for the image of the ground. And I have a image already loaded up here. So I'll click and drag into it to the texture property. And let me zoom out. And now we have a ground, but we also have to add a collision shape to it. So the player knows where to stop instead of continuously falling down. Collision shape 2D. And click on collision shape 2D and then let's add a shape to it. A new rectangle shape 2D will work. Let's drag it and let's just cover the surface of the ground. Okay, that'll work fine. Let's save it as world scene. Now I'll just make a simple player scene. Click, click, kinematic body, player, and bam! This is the player scene, and it's pretty simple. Just walking left and right. This is just so we have a player to pick up an item. So let's go back to the world scene, and let's add the player scene to it. Let's scroll out. And it's fairly simple, it doesn't even have gravity, so I'm just going to snap it onto the ground, like that. And let's try playing the world scene. So now we have a player that can walk left and right. Now we have to add picking up items to our inventory. So let's close this. Alright, so the first order of business is to be able to open up our inventory. So let's first go to project settings. And let's assign a button. So go to input map and let's create an action called inventory. Click add. Let's scroll down. And let's assign it any key. Let's say E. So now when we press E, we should toggle the inventory screen. Then let's add a canvas layer. So canvas layer is something that is good for user interface because it doesn't move along with the camera. So it's great for the inventory. Let's rename this to be user interface and then add the inventory scene as a child that we created before. So now we have it. But now we have to add some functionality so we're able to toggle the visibility of the inventory. So let's add a script to the user interface. Now all we got to do is just check for input. So let's create the input function. And if event is action press inventory, the button that we assigned, let's toggle the visibility of the inventory node. So we can access the inventory node by the dollar sign and the name. And we want to change the visible property. And to toggle, we can just do the exclamation mark, which is just the not symbol. And this will make the value of inventory dot visible opposite. Now let's click play, run the world scene, and let's press E. And now we're able to toggle the visibility of the inventory with just a button press. Great. But one thing is we don't want it to start off being visible. We wanted it started off being invisible, so we'll just click the visibility. Now we want to create a lootable item, and we can start off by just creating a scene. And I'll create a kinematic body 2D because I envisioned this item drop to have some movement. And let's rename this to be item drop. We'll add a sprite to it. And I'll just make it a slime potion. And since it's a kinematic body, we would have to add a collision shape to it as well. 
And the shape doesn't have to be exact, but I'll give it a general shape just so when the player detects it, he'll pick it up. So it doesn't have to cover exactly the body of the sprite. So that'll work just fine. Now let's save the scene as item drop. And let's also give it an animation player. And I'm just going to use this animation player to animate a floating effect to the sprite. So I'll just call it float. And I'll make it one second long and make it looping. And what I want to animate is the sprite's position. So to do that, we'll go to transform and I'll key the position property. And in the middle, I'll duplicate that and then change the Y value of this key to be negative one. And you can see it slightly go up and we want it to slightly go down. So if I play this now, it looks like it's floating, which is pretty neat. And I'll make it auto play on load. Let's add a script to the item drop scene. And this is the code. It's fairly simple and all it does is just apply gravity to the item drop scene. And also I set the item name so we can reference it later on. Now let's go back to the world scene and let's try to add some item drops. So item drop scene that's whoops let me click that and then drag it down here actually i'll drag it down there so i can show you some gravity and let's click play so if you saw it dropped all the way down and now we have an item drop in the world but if you notice one thing is that the player collides into it and we don't want that we want the item drop to collide with the world items, but not the player itself. So to do that, or to change that behavior, we would have to go and mess with collision layers. So let's go to project and project settings, go to general, scroll down to, if I correct, I think it's physics and 2D. Nope, that's not it. It's layer names, layer names and 2D physics. And here we can define different layers. So for instance, we can have a layer called player and world. And another layer could be item drop. So let's click close. And now we're able to configure certain layers to look at certain layers. So that way, not all the layers are looking at each other for collision purposes. Let's expand the collision section. And for the layer property, let's change this to item drop because layer refers to what layer is this current node on. And item drop is clearly on the item drop layer. And mask refers to what layer does this node look towards. And we don't want it to look towards player, but instead the world layer. And let's go to the ground node and let's open up the collision section and then change the layer to be world. And for mask, we'll make the world look towards all of the layers. And the last one is the player node. And let's click on the player node, oh, open up the collision section, and it's on the player layer. And it looks towards world and not player. Now we want the player to be able to detect item drops. To do that, let's add a node to the player. We'll make an area 2D. Let's rename this to be pickup zone. And we'll put this to be on no layer, but it looks towards the item drop layer because it's trying to search for items. And we'll add a collision shape to this node. Let me just toggle the visibility of the other collision shape. And let's add a rectangle. And this essentially works as the detection range for items. So if an item drop comes into this range, we'll be able to pick it up. Okay. 
that works for now. Let's add a script to the pickup zone. And then let's add some signals whenever a body enters the pickup zone. And since we set the layer it looks towards to only be item drops, then the body that's entered can only be item drops. So let's click on pickup zone and then node tab. And then we'll double click on body entered and we'll connect it to the pickup zone scene. And we'll do the same thing with body exited. And if you go to the script, you'll see that there's two new functions. And this, these two functions are called whenever an item drop enters the range of the pickup zone scene. Let's keep track of all the items that enter the pickup zone. And we'll do that by creating a dictionary called items in range. And within the body entered signal, let's add to the items in range. And the key can be the body type itself. And whenever the body exits, we should erase it from the dictionary. So we first check to see if it has the body. And if it does, we'll erase it. Let's go to the player script and let's add an input function to pick up items. So in this input function, we check to see if an action pressed pickup occurs. So we didn't add that yet. So let's go to project and project settings and then to input map and we'll create an action called pickup. And I'll just assign it to be Z. So when Z is pressed, we first see if the pickup zone has any items in range. And if it does, then we try to pick this item up by calling the pick up item function. And this function exists within the pickup item. So we have to go to the item drop script and add another function. The function will simply be this, but we have to add two new variables. One is the player, which keeps track of the player, obviously. And another one is being picked up, which is a flag to let the item scene, item drop scene, know what state it's in. So we'll initialize it to be false. So if it's false, if being picked up is false, we just want to apply gravity to it. Else, we want to start picking it up. And to do that, we add this code. And what this code does is it first gets the direction to the player and applies the velocity for the item drop to go towards the player. And once the item drop is close enough to the player, we destroy it, so it disappears. Let's go over to the world scene and let's try to play it. So I can walk past the item drop, and if I'm in range and I click Z, I'm able to pick it up. You saw it swoosh over to my player. But the next problem is it doesn't really add to our inventory. We don't keep track of it. So let's do that. To keep track of the inventory, let's create an auto load script so we have it always, even if we change themes. To do that, let's first create a script. Right click new script and we'll call it player inventory. And now let's make this an auto load script. To do that, we go to project, project settings, and then to the auto load tab. And then we'll find that script that we just created, player inventory, and we click add. And now it's an auto load script. Click close. Let's add this code to the inventory script. And the inventory variable here is of type dictionary. And the key is the slot index. And the value is an array of size 2. And it contains the item name and the quantity of the item. So we'll store information about our items in the inventory in this format. And that way we can load it up whenever we open up our game or if we just close our inventory and open it up. Let's go to the slot.gd script. And remember in the ready function, we had code to randomly add an item to the slot. Let's comment that out. And let's add a new function 
called initialize item, which takes an item name and an item quantity and sets the slot to be that item. And in this way, during runtime, we can set a slot to be a specific item. Then let's go to the item.gd script and let's add another function called set item, which takes in a name and a quantity and sets this item to be that item that we want it to be. So we update the texture and also make sure that the label is visible or invisible depending on the stack size. Let's go back to the player inventory script and let's add a function called add item. And all this does is it updates the inventory variable that we have in this script. And we call this add item function from the item drop.gd script. And we call it right when we pick up the item and before it's destroyed. So we go player inventory dot add item and we pass in the item name. And for now we'll set the quantity to be one. Last but not least, we want to update visually the inventory slots and what's in the slots. And to do that, let's go to the user interface script. And every time we toggle the inventory button, let's update the inventory. So we go, we'll access the inventory node, and then we'll call a function that we have yet to create, initialize inventory. Cool. And then let's go to the inventory script and let's create that function. So initialize inventory, all it does is it iterates through all the slots and then it searches the inventory within the player inventory script and adds that item. And we can call it in the ready function as well in case we do start up with any items. And that's all there is to it. And let's go to the world scene and then let's try this out. Let's walk past, let's press Z, press E, and voila, we picked up that one slime potion. And if we close it, we open it up again, it's still there. And the sword's there because we added that in in the code. So if I go back to the script, go to player inventory, we have iron sword right here, right? We can also easily manipulate this by adding in another iron sword and say we want it to be in the next slot. And we'll give it one item quantity and let's go to the world scene and let's add more item drops. Press, press Control D to duplicate. And I'll put it just dispersed. And now let's click play. This button actually. Let's press E. And then we have the two swords that we specified. Let's pick up this item, pick up that. Press E again and we picked up four slime potions. This is not complete because whenever we move around an item, it doesn't update the inventory variable that we have in the script. So probably in the next video, we'll go over updating the inventory variable every time we move an item within the inventory panel, because right now it just messes up. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you found it helpful, consider subscribing because it makes me happy. So please do and take care till next time.